interesting and surreal as always. But it's not the same as like, what I'm doing right now. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. You know that I bought I only need your attention for about the next hour. Uh, I had really wanted to take the opportunity just to do a shiur with you about intermarriage, conversion, Jewish identity. Many of you in this room probably have non-Jewish parents, grandparents, cousins, and that will certainly be true of the people that you will be serving when you leave this institution. And sociologists will tell you that identity is determined on at least three different levels. One is, how does the individual view himself or herself? Namely, if you were to meet someone, would they call themselves, in our instance, Jewish or not? Do they view themselves that way? Secondly, how does the community view them? And finally, how would people outside the community look at someone? What do you want? Personally, Thanksgiving is um, the safe haven. <laughs> Since I identify as, as a Jew and practice Jewish holidays, um, and the rest of my family doesn't. Yeah, I give sermons. So. You do? Yeah, Debarcora, yeah, I give sermons. You do? Oh, that's great. Yeah, I do the rabbi thing, I guess. There. You did both Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's great. It was uh, it was intense. You know, it was it's good. Interesting. Feels like far away. You have always, ever since I've known you, wanted to be a rabbi. And I'm going like, what is that? I mean, why? How is it that somebody I know wants to be a rabbi since since you were little? I think. Yeah. You know, for Pesach, for Passover, um, you know, that's not something I celebrate with my family of origin. I celebrate that with my husband. Um, and actually, referring it right now, I, we celebrate it with my husband's family. It's a little bit of back and forth stuff for me personally because of the way that I was raised. I mean, I was always raised with a Jewish identity. What are you? You're Jewish. Um, but I didn't have the education um, or the background or really the, the environment to really back that up for myself personally and emotionally. No. No? Oh, Auntie Julie. Yes, Auntie Julie, who else? As a teenager, I went through I went through a conversion process. So when we talk about this, I know that I I, I definitely relate very personally to what it means um, to, to the feelings that come up when one is is taking on a a religion, a faith, feelings of wonder and awe, and also fear and insecurity. Um, to become part of a, a a people is a pretty pretty big thing, and you always ask questions about. Will you really be accepted and who will accept you and what type of, are there going to be tests that people have for you and will you pass them or, or will you fail them and it doesn't matter. This is very different from how we normally um, do services. I think that for me what I'm trying to remember is that this is an experimental thing. We're trying to respect the community and you know keep Minhanga Makom, the custom of the place and, and we're doing that in a way, like we're keeping some of the same tunes um, I mean, it, this isn't something totally foreign, completely, but it is, it is different. So we're taking small steps. I think that's how we're balancing it a little bit. Number one, we are students, and this is like the space to do this. This is the space to try something else out, and hopefully it will inspire other people to be experimental. Um, not like out of the box crazy, but um, there's more than one way. La 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 I enter this sanctuary to voice the longings of my heart in prayer. In sacred company, I offer my love to the exalted. Galit and I have placed the Torah literally in the center of our community today as a reminder of what this endeavor is really about. Torah has always been at the center of our lives as the Jewish people. 
And as those who are training to be leaders of the Jewish people, we affirm that centrality every day. You really explain why the Torah was in the center of the room. Great. But I sensed you were reading a text that you were teaching. I want you to speak a little more to us. I'm mm -hmm. trying to do that now in the way I speak to you. Mm -hmm. Practice, as we talked about last week, talking to people, not to a congregation. And the fear of freezing up, you know, in that moment, I think is still with me as somebody who's, you know, relatively in the past few years new to this. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, I just want to, you know, acknowledge that. And that's actually, yeah. I think, the thing that I'm working, trying to work on the most. I was trying my best to be in the moment, and I think that I was for a lot. I really do. I really think, and if I wasn't, I was trying to be there. Mm -hmm. But one of the things I'm always nervous about is seeming like a, a, a fake. I, I just didn't want to come across in any way as trying to be soulful or whatever mm -hmm. and, and have people not really think that that was what was happening. Uh, get into the honest stuff here. That's important. Yeah. That's really important. The more you're comfortable, Jill, the more you can be yourself. Part of this is just being yourself, the writer who wrote these things, being able to communicate it in that setting. I want to be authentic in the moment. I want to really be there. But how do I do that and still be me? I don't There's know. I told much. you to go with your feeling because it's important that you feel comfortable in your skin and that right. you, you feel comfortable with what you're doing. I thought it was great. I kind of was anticipating that. My presence is a softer one. Sometimes when we think of a leader or we think of a rabbi, you know, loud, proud, out there. How would you have a preference? I actually think there are so many different models of leadership out there. I think that my, my approach is just a little bit different. Okay. All right, bye babe.